Earlier this week, Chief Justice Raymond Zondo launched a training program aimed at training aspirant women judges. The program is coordinated by the South African Judicial Education Institution. Joining us to discuss the significance of this training is Mbegezeli Benjamin, who is with Judges Meta. Mbegezeli, thank you for making time for us. Uh, let's maybe first start by looking at what the picture looks like when it comes to um, the heads of the court, because clearly we don't have enough women represented there. Uh, good afternoon, Clement, and to your viewers. Yes, you're quite right. At the leadership level, um, we don't have many women there. In fact, just recently, earlier this month, um, we had the KZN judge president, um, who is now the only head of court, the permanent head of court, uh, in the country. So at the leadership level, we only have one, and of course, uh, Deputy Chief Justice Maya. Um, but more broadly, the judiciary in South Africa has about 40% women. And, and this comes from uh, in 1994, there were only three women judges out of a, a pool of about 100 and something judges. So um, we've come a long way, but of course, there, there needs to be further strides, especially mm. getting more women at the leadership level. And when, as we talk about further strides, then this program is going to come in handy in advancing that, that program um, of ensuring that there's more inclusivity and more women represented. Uh, what is the intention um, of this program and, and how is it going to help change the picture at the leadership level? Well, then the, the intention of this program, um, when it was started in, in 2004 uh, by Justice Minister Bridget Mabansha. The intention was to get more women into the judiciary, was to get more black women into the judiciary because, um, as you know, because of our history of, of discrimination, especially discrimination that affected black women more, very few of them um, made it to um, legal practice. And even when they were in practice, um, they wouldn't be exposed to the kind of work that would prepare them to be judges. So there was a big gap in that we, we didn't have a lot of women who could easily become judges. And so the program was trying to, to bridge that gap, to, to give them the kind of skills that will help them succeed when they become uh, uh, judges. And, and over the last couple of years, it has, in fact, delivered because some of the uh, women judges that we have today at the highest level, at the Constitutional Court, they came through this program. And so it, 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 it is an intervention that is necessary mm. because in order to diversify our judiciary. So it's a 12-month program. What is it going to entail? Are there going to be lectures? Are the current um, and maybe even retired judges going to be involved? Yes, so the program uh, this started earlier this week, and during the course of the week, there were a series of, of lectures, so the more theoretical component of the program, where uh, retired judges, sitting judges of the Constitutional Court, the Supreme Court of Appeal, and the High Court, they were giving lectures to these aspirant women judges. Um, the, on, the lectures were on... Uh, various aspects of a court procedure and they were on how to be a judge basically how to manage a court hearing how to manage witnesses how to treat how to um, deal with certain cases that deal with complex areas of the law so this was the theoretical component that finished yesterday um, and then for the next 12 months the candidates will be placed in court as acting judges where they will now have to put those skills into practice, but also they'll receive mentorship uh, from some of the senior judges at, mm. at the courts where they will be placed. And, and who do the candidates comprise of? So the, the candidate uh, pool is drawn from uh, a wide variety of areas because um, what the constitution says is that um, the the, the, in the past, judges could only be drawn from senior counsel, so senior advocates. Now that pool now includes university professors, attorneys, advocates, uh, magistrates, and, and the pool that we have uh, right now is also comprised of, of those diverse areas of legal practice. So it is a, a diverse pool of candidates that we have. And, and in terms of the selection process, how was that done? 
So from what we heard from the Office of the Chief Justice is that the selection pro- process included um, the candidates submitting their applications, but also uh, undergoing interviews, and then there was a, a judgment writing exercise to test um, the candidate's skills on whether they can actually do the job of a judge. So that was the selection uh, component, and, and the candidates that, we, that underwent the training program this week were those who were successful in that, in that uh, selection process. Yeah, th- this is obviously going to help in the broader objective of transforming uh, the, the, the judiciary, um, and in particular ensuring that representation of women um, in the judiciary. Do you think it's also going to give that confidence booster uh, to women who may want to run for even positions of the heads of court. So it encourages women to make themselves available for those positions. Yes, it, it, it definitely will, uh, uh, Clement. But I think there's also, we need to step back a little bit and think about why is it that we need our courts to be diverse? Why is it that we want uh, more women to be judges? Why is it that we want people from rural backgrounds to be judges? That's because when you come before a court, you must feel like you are going to receive justice. And the person who's there dispensing justice, you must feel like you have some sort of relation to them. You can trust that they are exercising the, their best ability and looking at the law. So diversity strengthens the judiciary, and which is why it's important to, to have women. But, of course, the gap that we have now is that we don't have enough women in leadership in the judiciary. And so this training program, yes, will encourage, but I think there is a lot more that the judiciary could do to get women to become leaders in the judiciary. Yeah, and let's hope after this program this year we're not going to have another pause like we saw uh, previously, because my understanding is the last time we had this kind of a program was what, in 2007? Uh, well, there, there was, I think, the last time it was around 2017, 2018, yeah. um, and then there was, I think, the disturbance of the, of the pandemic. But yes, it should actually be an annual program, yeah. and it should um, actually recruit not only women, but uh, a, lot of, a lot more diverse people um, into the program, because it's a pipeline towards becoming a good judge. So I think uh, that's one thing that should happen going forward. Yeah, let's hope uh, they're going to be consistent with it being an annual program. Begazeli Benjamin, who's with Judges Matter, thank you uh, for speaking to us about the importance uh, of this program and also just the importance broadly of transformation in the judiciary.